Hello everyone, welcome to part 6 of the Project Control mini-series and on this video I'm going to talk about Project Change. So, uh, let's start by talking about Integrated Change Control and this is the chapter where I basically say about, I've been talking about change management in a lot of videos and now I want to talk about exactly how it's done or what it is. Okay, So, uh, Change Control is the process of reviewing all changes request, approving the changes, managing the change to deliverables, organizing the process uh, assets, project documents, project play and plan, and um, uh, communicating their disposition. In other words, it's the process of managing all the things that if a change is uh, presented and approved, it's the process then as well of changing all the necessary things that will have to be adapted uh, because of the changes made. So why do we have this process? Well, First of all, we, we cannot accept every single change that is requested for a variety of reasons. And the process exists in order to maintain the integrity of the project, but also to communicate project expectations. Um, and these are the two most important points, in my opinion, because it really is to make sure that the project is going the right direction. The third aspect that I want you to remember is that we should maintain a, a historical database for reference. What do I mean with that? All the change requests that are made should be put into a register so that we can analyze it and we keep it okay but it's also in the future might provide a good audit trail to understand what how the project went through and proving that you are organized trust me saves a lot of problems in the future um, and also it's a great way as well to make sure that uh, we have a performance measurement for the team members in order to understand that if the project is going as we plan and if things are going well then we also know what are the members contributing the most for example or coming up with the requests and why and I think this is an important aspect to have. So one of the things that we start with is to actually talk about our baseline plan, our original plan. And before I go any further, I want to explain the concept of baseline control. Baseline control is the approved version of a work product that can be changed only through the formal change control processes and is used as a basis of comparison. So this is our original, um, our original plan, and it's the one that we're going to be comparing our actual performance to what we said we would obtain. And therefore, it is a very important document that can only be changed through the change process. So project boundaries are under um, the baseline control here and we, we talk about by all the project boundaries. So we're talking about scope, schedule, resources, okay? And we talk about how we define those things. In other videos I explain how to do all the plan and how to plan for scopes or schedule for resources and so on. So um, here is that plan that I'm talking about that we're going to be comparing ourselves to during the project. But it also has the business impact of the project because that also has to explain the reason of the project. So baseline control will normally use a very high level project plan. So we have a very high level plan and that's what we're going to compare to. We're not going to compare to the detail plan because the detail plan is just a breakdown of the high level plan into detailed tasks. And it would not make sense to compare ourselves in every single task. Rather, it makes more sense for us to compare the work we're doing to the major categories or to the main objectives of each phase. So how can changes be requested? Well, there's three major uh, sources of change requests, okay? External forces acting on the project, for example, customer asking for a um, customer asking for new um, excuse me, customer asking for new uh, uh, requests or your manager asking for you to do something extra uh, or to change something and so on. So this is something outside of the team. Then the other two sources, the other two reasons, okay, that we would have is from the team itself, okay? And we could break it down here into two categories. On category two that I have there is that the project team asks for a change in order to improve the performance of the project, or they ask for a change in order to recover from an unplanned difficulty. And this is the three major sources of requests that we have, okay? Um, so one of the things that we must do is configuration management. And a configuration management system, or a CMS, uh, provides an evolutionary mechanism to identify and control technical baselines and project information. Now, this is a tool that I'm not going to go too much into detail, but normally this is used for more technical aspects and for a more a development of new products. This is a system that basically um, allows you to keep track of all the changes so that in the future when you go through the process again you are using the best practices learned. 
Okay. Uh, like I said, we're not going to go too much into detail on this. There's much information online you can find. Um, but basically, there are three main elements here to CMS, which is configuration identification. So here we establish the technical baseline and we talk about all the configurations that we're going to be evaluating on the project. Okay. Uh, levels of quality, levels of performance, and so on. Configuration status accounting. This is basically the fact of storing all the change of information that we have done during the process. And normally for new products, development there's a lot of it and the last one is configuration verification and auditing so this is to ensure that configuration requirements have been met and therefore it's to provide an audit to the project in order to make sure that indeed what the team develop is indeed what is said on the documents so to summarize change project can be change management can be quite complex but uh, indeed there are times where it is necessary to be done. And uh, on those times, it is important that we keep the correct records, that we write our lessons learned and the motives why something was approved or denied. So that in case of an audit in the future, we have all the necessary documents to, in other words, prove our worth. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video of this mini series.